here in sunny Sorrento uh, near Melbourne in Australia just getting ready for the International Moth World Championships. It's super exciting to be sailing here in Australia. Uh, it's a bit of a change from the last worlds which were in Hailing Island in the UK and the ones before that which were in Hawaii. So it's great to be here. I sail with so many goddamn Australians and Kiwis you got to come down and learn what the uh, origin of their madness is. That's probably the main reason for coming here. I think there's 167 entrants, but there's about five people who said they're not coming. So we've still got over 160. Well, we, uh, we had a 10 o'clock start and uh, Everyone was sort of a little late off the beach, managed to fall out here, but then the um, breeze has shut down just on the uh, front side of a little bit of rain, and yeah, now she's uh, fairly glassy, and uh, the, the call's been made to send everyone back ashore, so no, nah, she's a bit, uh, a bit testing when it's really light, you know, and there's obviously, you know, these boats are um, really coming to their own, sort of six, seven, eight knots and above, um, but uh, yeah, below that she's, uh, she's a bit of a long day. I was out training here about uh, 10 days ago and uh, back started to get a little bit stiff and uh, it's, it's quite common for my sailors to get a little bit stiff back, it's been windy and uh, and uh, went to uh, went to see the physio and uh, he thought it might be a, a disc problem so um, did a, quite a bit of freeing up in that area and uh, about 10-15 minutes later I uh, collapsed on the street in Sorrento and um, unfortunately I had to get the ambulance to take me to hospital because I, I, I couldn't move um, at all. I've had sort of 10 days to, uh, you know, to process and to kind of understand where I'm going to be at and what my limitations are. And to be honest with you, I, you know, I, even until a couple of days ago, I didn't think it was going to be possible for me to get on the water and, you know, let alone to be competitive. It's, it's unlikely I'm going to get quite the result that I would have maybe liked, but, you know, I don't want to write myself off just yet. I think my back's getting a little better every day and I've had some of the best treatment out here that, you know, that I could possibly have had. Having the opportunity to come down and race with the top best guys in the world is just always, you know, you would never want to pass that up. So, I mean, I'd rather be doing the, the next the leg of the Volvo to, to China, but I mean, second best thing is to come down here and race against these guys. Yeah, I've sort of decided to do the Moth Worlds really just to try and upskill a little bit. Uh, they're a really, really good boat for doing that, and uh, yeah, I've enjoyed it. I'm learning a lot, still got heaps more to learn. Um, but you know, sort of, I've come in with the mindset more of trying to learn rather than uh, totally going for the win. You know, so as long as I keep that in the back of my mind and keep having fun, then it's going to be, a, you know, it'll be a good week. So today was uh, the first day of the worlds, and um, it was pretty light and tricky out there. You know, one of the top guys in our group was Pete Burling and uh, had a really close racing with him. And I believe in the blue group, um, Goobs and Blair are in that um, fleet as well. So, you know, a bit of Aussie-Kiwi rivalry going on and uh, it's funny how you race against each other all year in the 49er and here we are again at the Moth Worlds racing against each other. Yeah, well, they had a pretty solid start to the regatta. Um, it's been a while since I've raced a Moth in that light condition, so that the first race was a, a little bit different uh, to what I'd I suppose been used to recently, so yeah, probably a little bit disappointed. I dropped back from kind of not a bad position to seventh there, but I uh, managed to, to come good in the last two and get a second and a first. I think we've had three worlds in a row where there hasn't been much wind. I think this is about the windiest day since uh, the last day Garda. Dude, it's going to be awesome. Just to stay upright and uh, sending it, that'll be alright.
conditions were much better than yesterday. We had some wind for a start. Um, I got a 16th and a 17th, um, and then I'm not sure I was in the top 20 for the second two, I think. It was wind over tide today down at the bottom of course here in Yellow Fleet, so it was a bit lumpy. Well, it's a case of it's not over till it's over, I think. Um, I was had a, I had a huge lead and uh, put one capsize in and still had a big lead and then I just kept capsizing. And, uh, once, you, once you put it down in that little zone between the two bottom marks, it gets, it gets pretty hard to get across the line. So I ended up losing four boats and finishing fifth, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I ended up second in that race. A um, little bit disappointing because I was leading by a long way at one point. I was coming into the lure mark, the last lure mark, and there was a big load of boats all gaggled together that we were lapping, and they just sucked the wind away. And Hiroki, in true samurai Japanese style, came around the outside and uh, just snuck it from me. I was even thinking that to shorten the course, shorten the course in the top, second top mark, please shorten the course. Uh, second is enough. <laughs> but in the end, yeah. I won the race, much nicer. Tomorrow we start from 11 o'clock instead of one. It's gonna be a big breeze, just relax for now. Uh, so the situation was, it's uh, pretty extreme conditions, but apparently the wind's not too bad, but just launching and getting out to the course can be a bit tricky. So hopefully get some nice races in, hopefully it doesn't get too bad out there and uh, some good racing. and um, I thought it was kind of saleable. It, we, we all would have had a couple of swims, but it didn't feel out of control. I went downwind about four or five times, started crashing, and by the end of it, worked out my settings with my wand and was able to go downwind perfectly fine. Today would be as, as fair for the heavy guys as yesterday was for the light guys, and it would have been a bit of an equaliser. You know, you've got to realise the moth is a very difficult boat to sail and there's just some waves that the moth won't go through. If the foil's only just over a metre long, if the wave's bigger than a metre, you're not going to go through it. So you've got to steer around it. And the worst that happens on a moth is you capsize, you hurt yourself on the side step as your leg hits it, you get some bruises, you get it up with a big smile on your face and you keep going. We've only had one Gold Fleet race so far, so I'm pretty sure that the race committee will be pushing for four races today at least. Once you're out there racing, I think it's great. You sail against literally the best sailors in the world. So I feel very fortunate to be out there on the starting line and lining up against them. Today we are really lucky and uh, Sorrento kind of turned it on for everyone and we had four great races in probably um, I'd say 18 to 25 knots, and it was perfect flat water, and now the sun's out, couldn't ask for more. I woke up this morning, I felt pretty good, I felt, you know, relaxed, my back wasn't uh, wasn't too sore, a bit of pressure on it, but, but it wasn't too sore, and I just kind of felt like, you know, I'm going to go and give it everything today, and 
Pete and, and Nate are a good few points in front and, uh, and Josh has probably eked out another few points on me today, he beat me in every race by only a couple of places in each race but you know that it's, uh, it's going to be hard work tomorrow to get into the top three but it's, it's still doable. Yeah, so it's the last day of Moth Worlds. Um, Pete's got an eight point lead. I got eight points back to third in Josh McKnight. As you can see behind me, it's, uh, it's pretty fresh out there and uh, pretty bumpy. It's fresh. It's, it's fresher than Will Smith in the early 90s out there. So uh, I'm not sure how we're going to cope. Could be tough. an AP up so we're just waiting ashore and um, hopefully the wind will drop a little bit and then we'll be able to get back out and get another couple of races in. We're going yacht racing. Going yacht racing. Well we just dropped the flag and we've got to get it on. Check it in. <laughs> it's, uh, it's going to be another little survival race but it uh, should be pretty good fun and uh, no, it would be great to get another race away uh, before this, this championship finishes. great being able to compete against these guys that are you know Olympic gold medalists and world champions sort of as a girl you're never really going to get to compete against them so it's pretty cool to be able to do that. The boats are definitely challenging to sail I mean yesterday we came in and Annalise and I were in the change room like what the hell are we doing out there like why do we put ourselves through this we've got bruises everywhere we're absolutely exhausted. Yeah, I'm absolutely stoked to go out with a, with a bit of a bang there and manage to take that last race. I mean, it's just been a long build up and uh, to kind of go out like that and manage to take a win in that last one, uh, such a good way to go out. Yeah, it's been uh, been pretty cool to be honest, to be able to, to just line up against all the boys. Um, yeah, a lot of us sail different boats and to do different things with our spare time, but it's, yeah, it's been amazing to be able to race them all, all this week. Enjoy the sailing in Japan. The wind limit is like 10, 15 knots maximum. <laughs> and the bottom limit is at 3 knots, 4 knots. <laughs> I hope to see you all again in Japan. The winner of the 2015 Moth World Championships, please put your hands together for Peter Burling.